Hello everyone, it's Oliver Harbour here for the 4K Collection video. Now, I have over 40 titles in my collection, which I'm going to go through and show you which ones I recommend and which ones to essentially avoid. Uh, instead of, if, if you already own a Blu-ray, i.e. it's not worth upgrading to the 4K. Now, 4K discs have less compression, so you get better sound and picture. With the HDR mode on your TV, if you have a 4K TV, you may see some of the colours be appear slightly different than you, than you are used to. So for example, if you are a big fan of, I don't know, um, like Predator 2, you may come see it on 4K where the colors may be slightly different in terms of like the reds and oranges. Uh, for example, Man of Steel, uh, a lot of the Krypton moments have, like we see the sun, it's a slightly different color and it ends up slightly bleeding. So that's the HDR kind of not, the earlier discs are always the ones that are a bit, temp not temperamental, but questionable with the HDR color filters. So let's kick it off with the first title, or well, two titles actually, because they're, a pair essentially. So we have Ghostbusters 1 and 2. Um, now they did put out these on Blu-ray which were mastered from 4k versions and now the, these are obviously native 4k so 2160p. Uh, some some 4k discs will go through will be upscales of 2k versions so I'll point out those ones. Um, if you've already seen the 4k sort of downscale to Blu-ray version released probably around the same time as this um, these are a major improvement only in terms of, say, skin tones, close-ups. You see extra detail in the in the dark areas, um, but it's not a film where you can look at it and go, "That's the best I've ever seen of Ghostbusters." You know, I mean, it's I mean, it's pretty close to thirty-five millimeter print, um, but it's not um, sort of, it's not like demo disc material. But these are you know pretty cheap, easy to get hold of, and the extra content is pretty much been ported over from the uh, the Blu-rays. Uh, as, you'll, as we'll come across with some of these discs, the, a lot of the extras are actually on the Blu-ray they include, not on the 4K version. Some of the 4K versions will have the commentaries, but that's about it, but not really much in terms of special features, unless it doesn't come with a Blu-ray version, uh, which will come across throughout my collection. The next one is Justice League. Now, probably one of the most average kind of movies um, in most recent years extremely average there is it's not bad good it's not good it's not terrible you know it's just straight down the middle very average um god dusty cover um i really need to clean my collection because this sits on the shelf collecting dust sometimes so i'm not watch this in a while um extra content is pretty pap and this unfortunately is an upscale so it's a 2k master um it's been upscaled 2160p um hdr colors are quite well balanced they're not they don't they don't seem to bleed that much it's quite consistent throughout so there will be extra detail than over the blu-ray of course because of less compression and it's obviously and it's at a high resolution but it's not going to blow your socks off i'm afraid another superhero film and it's man of steel now this is actually um an early 4k disc doesn't doesn't come with a blu-ray um oh yes it does actually <laughs> doesn't actually say on the cover. Usually it will say 4K plus Blu-ray, blah, blah, blah. Um, so yeah, so it's got the um, Blu-ray 4K version there. Now this one, as I mentioned earlier, had some sort of odd colors with the HDR grading. Um, on Krypton, if you look at the sun and stuff, it just looks weird. Um, not a major improvement. You know, when I put this in for the first time, because when you get, jump onto a format, you sort of end up, you know, grabbing anything you can that's going cheap, you know, or get something you, you kind of, I don't mind Man of Steel, I don't hate it, I don't love it either, it's got some good stuff to it, but some of it's just like, he's not Superman, is he? He's not really Superman. It's Zack Schneider's kind of angry Superman. Um, but yeah, it wasn't a major leap, and I was a bit gutted by that. I was like, as soon as you get the, you know, we jump onto a format and you buy this, for example, you put it in, you're like, hmm. It looks all right. It's not, it doesn't look like, you know, I'm looking at 35 millimeter pristine film. But yeah, this is unfortunately an upscale. Uh, from my records, yes, it is. Upgrade to 4K, so it's not true 4K. Um, no, no, it's, it's strange. A lot of the new titles that will come across in this collection, new films aren't in 4K. It's usually the older movies are, which is, to be honest, which is kind of a blessing actually, because most of the movies I like are older movies, not new ones. Also, and I'm not, you know, I'm not being a snob or anything or being a, uh, a nit nitpicky bastard, but it's um, the older movies, something like Die Hard will come across is 4K. OK, that one's down. Next one. Oh, more superhero stuff and more dust. <laughs> the Dark Knight trilogy. Now, this was remastered fairly recently by Christopher Nolan. Um, so, yeah, I'll take this out of the sets. Um, so, yeah, you got 
Oh, that one's back to front. You've probably all, you've, you've probably all seen these in the shops anyway. Um, yeah, so all 4K, all truly remastered. These are these look stunning because with the beauty of Christopher Nolan, he shoots in anamorphic 35 um, and 70 millimeter and IMAX. So, for example, with I with Dunkirk coming up later on, you got a mix of 70 millimeter and IMAX. This these these have a combination of 35 and IMAX. So all the IMAX stuff looks gorgeous. A slight change in HDR grading with the picture. So if you've seen The Dark Knight and you see the opening with the um, the city as a Joker robs the bank, there's a slight difference in colour. The colours seem a bit warmer. I remember it being a little bit more blue on the Blu-ray. Batman Begins, obviously, because that's all 35 millimeter anamorphic. Um, it's the best it's ever seen. It's, it's the best it's ever looked. Sorry. Um, a, lot of the edge, a lot of the edge enhancement that was kind of applied to the Blu-rays, it seems to be removed from these versions. So yeah, it's. Um, Worth getting if you see it going for a you know, reasonable price. Don't pay like £40 or more. The next one is The Shape of Water. Very good film. Uh, very, it's got that French cinema style to it with Jean-Pierre Genet uh, style. Um, obviously won quite a lot of awards. It won the Oscars, didn't it? Um, as you can see on the back here, it's kind of, it's got the extra content is all on the Blu-ray. So it's not on the 4K version. Now this is an upscale. So it's not true 4K. Um, HDR grading is very good. It's very well balanced. It doesn't bleed. It doesn't, um, you know, it doesn't it doesn't like go too far with the colours, for example. So everything seems very consistent throughout. Um, so yeah, so you know, it's, it's a it's a great movie. Um, very you know, very very well shot, very well acted, and very emotional as well. So uh, yeah, I really enjoyed that when I saw it when it came out, and uh, seen it a couple of times now since it's uh, came to 4K. The next one is Die Hard. Now this is uh, an American version. An American version, as you'll notice, uh, for my UK viewers, that they they, they come in slimmer cases. Um, where, for example, you've got the uh, the Matrix here. Uh, it's the next one on. It's got a thicker case. Um, don't know why the American ones are sl uh, slimmer. No idea why. Very good transfer. Now, because Die Hard is very orangey and very red, and uh, in many areas, I thought you know this is going to be the HDR colours are going to be really bit off but they, yeah they're very consistent throughout there's a little bit of bleeding when he throws the um the bomb down the elevator shaft and it goes poof, and he, you know he has to dive out the way and there's a little bit of the reds go a bit too much uh, but this is true 4k so yeah so this is definitely worth getting hold of and i think there's a new what's it sound the back here oh no it's put it's put some of the audio commentaries on uh the 4k disc as well but all the extra features in terms of making off stuff is all on the um the blu-ray the matrix uh, this has been remastered properly. This is true 4K. All the green colours, the green filter has been taken out of it. It's been restored to its original look um, and it looks stunning. And thankfully the Blu-ray version has been remastered as well. So if you if you want to get, if you know you're going to get 4K at some point, um, but want to enjoy it now, you can just buy it and just watch the Blu-ray. Uh, sound on this is incredible. Um, all the extras that have been ported over from the other previous releases are on this. Yeah, this is a fantastic movie and one of their best looking kind of 4k discs I've got um, there's other ones in there which I'll bring up which I love but this does look like 35 millimeter film which is what you want the next one is Mad Max Fury Road now this is an upscale this isn't true 4k and the HDR color effects are weird and they bleed a lot so you know for example um, I set off these kind of fireworks or like explosions as they're driving along and and then and the guy playing the guitar and it's like the flames coming out of it the colours are bleeding all over the place. It's very odd. So it's not, I mean, you've got, you do have the extra sharpness there, thanks to the upscale, but it's not, it's not going to, if you're used to the Blu-ray version and seeing it in the cinema, um, you know, seeing this 4K version, you'll be a bit disappointed with the HDR colours. Maybe with like Dolby Vision, it may kind of correct some of that, but I'm not entirely sure about that. But yeah, so this is probably one not to upgrade to. Next one is the Predator collection. Now, Predator 1 and 2, both shot on 35mm film, and both have been, they've both been transferred at 4K. Predators was shot on the Genesis camera, so it, any else, I think it's a 2K, I think the max of that camera. So um, that's basically an upscale, but uh, it still does look very nice. Uh, this is obviously the best Predator 1 has ever looked, I think. And the same with Predator 2. I mean, Predator 2 always had a good transfer throughout the years. Um, I mean, I had it on Laserdisc and it looked pretty good back then. Um, Predator 1 has always been inconsistent because due to the film stock and, you know, a lot of noise reduction. Sadly, the Blu-ray versions aren't remastered. They are the old 
packaged version, so you'll get the Ultimate Edition of Predator on the Blu-ray, so it'll be the heavily DNR'd version. And the same for uh, Predator 2 was fine, and, Pre and Predators were fine on Blu-ray. So this is, uh, you know, only worth getting if you're a big hardcore, even if you are a hardcore fan of Predator and want to see it in 4K, because everything else on it is all being transferred from the previous stuff. So you will be essentially double dipping. Um, all, all you're getting is just the improved picture on these movies. Next one is Blade Runner, the final cut. Truly outstanding picture. True 4K, shot on 35mm anamorphic and with a mix of 65mm stuff for the visual effects stuff by Douglas Trumbull. Um, you all know Blade Runner. It looks stunning. It's always looked stunning and will always continue to look stunning. And this is the best version you're going to see of it. It's truly amazing. When you And the sound is so, so good. When you see it for the first time, you see, not for the first time, but the first time on this format, when you see that shot of LA, you're just like, fuck. It just blew me away, absolutely blew me away. So yeah, this is probably one of the ones to show as a sort of demo disc. And its sequel, Blade Runner 10 to 9. No, <laughs> 2049. Uh, yeah, I think it's actually better than the first film. But it's, it's, I think it's got a better story than the Blade Runner, the first Blade Runner. Uh, there's, you know, you are in part of the investigation with Ryan Gosling. Um, and it was all took me by surprise as well when I went through this, you know, the first time watching it. And it is truly amazing to look at. Um, and it's true 4K. So you don't have to worry about it being an upscale for a new film. And I really need to watch this again. I saw it once at the cinema and then saw it when it came, when I got it on 4K. I've not seen it since. Because it's quite a long film. And when I watched it last with my girlfriend, she fell asleep for the last hour. So she missed all the, like, the really good, exciting stuff. And uh, so, yeah, maybe this weekend I'll give it a watch. Um, extra content wise, I mean, there's, I think there's a couple of bits and bobs. But extra content now, special features are getting a bit slim and a bit weak. Um, for example, you know, with the, the Justice League one, it's just like such promo crap, you know, there's nothing really meaty to it. And, um, I, you know, this is, seems a little bit slim as well. But yeah, I mean, highly recommended. Like Blade Runner, the final cut, very good as a demo disc. Oh, another Christopher Nolan film, Interstellar in 4K. And it's true 4K because you've got 35 millimeter, you've got 70 mil. I think it's 70 mil, maybe, I think it's just mostly IMAX and 35. Uh, yeah, incredible picture, incredible sound. Very good film. Uh, my One of my girlfriend's favourite films, this and Contact. There's a similar thing there going on. Um, yeah, it's, you know, it's Interstellar, Christopher Nolan. You know, it's always it's always a good laugh. Um, I, I was a little bit, I remember when it came out, I was a little bit, like, funny on it. I mean, I was a, um, didn't quite, um, I, it was quite an emotional ride, I remember it being. But I was a little bit down on it in some parts, and I think over repeated viewing, I've actually you know enjoy it far more now. And the and the score, I mean, I'm not as I always complain about Hans Zimmer in some sometimes, you know, when you have um, kind of repeating stuff. But when he's trying to um, Matthew McConaughey's, you know, you know, controlling the spaceship and they're both spinning, and he's got to connect them together, and the music's just like massive organs going boom, and um, yeah, it's just yeah one of his best kind of. One of his best scores in recent years, I think, with Interstellar. Um, Dunkirk was quite good, but that was just a, you know, it was uh, a bit more experimental, but this was, you know, taking a lot of cues from 2001. Another Nolan film, uh, we have Dunkirk. Um, 70 millimeter and IMAX stuff. So it's, yeah, true 4K. Very, very good. I had to, when I, when I got this, I had to show my dad what 4K really looked like um, because you know, you could show, you could show, because we've got that, I've got that projector, you know, Ben Q had sent me it to review and I went, I said, I've got to show my dad this Dunkirk because he loves, you know, he loves the war period movies um, and seeing this, you know, he was just like, whoa, just blown away by it. So like Blade Runner and Blade Runner 2049, this is another perfect demo disc. We, you always got to look out for, if you see a movie in 4K and it's shot, you know it's shot on like IMAX or 70mm, you've, you've got to get it because it's going to blow you away. Sometimes, you know, I think most films that are shot in these large format films are generally pretty good. You know, you've got the old 60s kind of Bible epics, whatever, or 50s ones where shot on like Vista Vision or um, they should, they should they would always look nice, but the films themselves may be a little bit of a bore to sit through. But this is obviously a true classic. Ooh, we're going into Jim Henson territory now. We've got The Dark Crystal remastered. This is in true 4K, really good sound as well. Trevor Jones's score is just brr, amazing. Um, there's, a, there's a few extra bits and bobs on this, like extra special features, like interviews and stuff with Jim Henson's daughter. Um, is, it, is it Brian Froud? Or, uh, I can't remember his name now. The guy who designed um, 
made Brian Froud, yeah, with his son, he talks about it. And um, there's the old documentaries as well, which are included. But the the new interview with his daughter and sort of, it's like a making of the movie, but condensed to like 20 minutes, like it's designed for YouTube. So it's like people with no attention span, so they cut through loads of it, which is a bit disappointing. Dark Crystal was shot on 35mm, um, does look really nice, this does. But there's some of the opticals, see Sony haven't really mastered, remastered the opticals. They've they done, they've basically just done a, you know, a new uh, sort of scan of the print and probably color corrected some things. But the opticals are very ropey because they're not like Warner Brothers who will go in and proper do a do a proper optical cleanup and change and improve the colors like in the case of Superman. Um, but this is, you know, if you love Dark Crystal, you've got to get this because it's the best it's ever looked. So, yeah. Next is more Jim Henson. We've got Labyrinth or the irate gamer would say Labyrinth. Um, yeah, this is, um, you know, true classic, great soundtrack by David Bowie or Bowie, however you like to pronounce his name. I've been told off before by saying it wrong. Um, yeah, there's a few new bits and bobs as well with extra content. Um, this is, if you've already got the Blu-ray of it, which is from a 4K master, you may not be, you may not see a huge leap, uh, like, like the Dark Crystal, they both had Blu-rays put out from 4K masters. Um, this is, uh, I mean, it's, it wasn't nice to watch it, it wasn't this huge leap of improvement. Um, I mean, I saw the extra detail there, especially when, um, you know, she, she comes to the gates and she sees Hoggle there and he's killing and he's like spraying all the uh, fairies and stuff. I mean, Alex Thompson's photography is outstanding. Like Dark Crystal, a lot of the opticals haven't been improved, so they're a little bit, <laughs> a bit laughable in, in places, but it shouldn't really matter really. It's Labyrinth. Um, yeah, and it's classic. I mean, I don't think it's, I think it's probably, it's hard to know if, if people, if there's a stronger fan base of Dark Crystal or this. I'd probably say Dark Crystal, but Labyrinth is kind of, you know, retained its kind of core fan base thanks to the music and David Bowie and um, and just the whole kind of magical world of it and Jim Henson's mad uh, imagination. Next up is Valerian. Now Valerian um, didn't do very well, massive bomb. Uh, was it last year or year before? I think it was year before. <laughs> um, I did review this, I kind of enjoyed his flockiness about it. It was, it was all hyped up to be like the fifth element and stuff, but it wasn't really. I mean, it's it's got amazing like conceptual designs to it. Production design is incredible. Photography is outstanding. This is an upscale. It's not true 4K as well, which is really annoying because I saw I got this and I looked at it and went, this is. It, I swear, I swear this could look better, you know, with its with its transfer. With, it should look more dazzling, but it kind of didn't. There's a lot of titles where when you watch stuff in HDR sort of 4K, it's like it's, it's like the brightness is a little bit too high inherently on the master where you haven't it's not it's not your tv it's just the master itself it feels like, it feels like it's slightly overexposed and then when you've got like a photo and you you increase the exposure too much it goes slightly white and slightly um grayish um so yeah that wasn't a major it wasn't a major improvement so yeah if i go back now i probably would i probably would have just bought the blu-ray just for a laugh but yeah so kind of a bit gutted by this because it cost like 20 pound i think when it came out or maybe a little bit more so i was a bit stupid but yeah, it's an okay movie. I don't, I don't dislike it. There's some fun, fun stuff in it, and Luke Besson stuff is always kind of quirky and interesting, anyway. Um, but yeah, it's um, probably one I would just buy on Blu-ray if you see it, and, and if you are interested in Valerian. Next one is Logan. Uh, very good film. Uh, really enjoyed it. Uh, very depressing as well. <laughs> it's a bit of a sad end for um, Wolverine. If you've not seen it, spoilers. Sorry. Um, yeah, it comes with the black and white version as well, and then the regular Blu-ray with extra. Features and the disc one 4K version comes with a commentary by the director. Um, yeah, HDR colors are really good uh, when you went in the desert, so, so to speak, and you've got uh, Xavier there in that massive encased off, so because he's you know he's getting dementia and thinking he's you know lost his mind, um, and his powers are essentially affecting the whole world. Essentially, you can do. Um, yeah, it just looks incredible. So yeah, worth getting to show off a 4K picture. Next is X-Men Apocalypse. Now this is true 4K, this is not an upscale. Um, not everyone's favorite X-Men movie. I quite enjoy this film um, because of its third act. It's very much like all the superheroes come together to fight the bad guy who's built this giant pyramid. It's kind of reminds me of old classic movies where like Krull and Supergirl, you've got this, the villain's got this massive base at the end they've got to face off against. Um, and it's a very good soundtrack as well. John Ottman's score is very kind of 80s style, big theatrical orchestral piece. Um, I mean, it's got its problems with the script, obviously, and Apocalypse is quite short in this. It should be taller. Um, 
but the moments at the end where Xavier's there because he's they've, they're looking over the city and Xavier's you know because obviously they've taken away his wheelchair so he's like he's just slumped down on the thing and um Magneto's there and he, and he gets his helmet and stuff the photography there is just stunning it's really impressive so yeah another good disc um obviously comes with a blu-ray as well and obviously extra extra features but you know I mean there's gag reel well, I'm, not, I'm not actually watched that gag reel actually introduction by Brian Singer no commentary I don't think with from Brian Singer always oh, he does yeah he does provide a commentary is the film where I don't think he could promote it was it the last one he couldn't promote can't remember now but yeah this is quite cheap it's quite an early 4k title so yeah if you see it going for peanuts pick it up because it's got a very good picture next one is independence day um only comes with the 4k version uh no blue on this this is a very early title these came this came like uh, another title i've got coming up came came with a lot of blu-ray players uh sort of get people to jump onto the format so yeah i mean very good it's, it's true 4k sorry um the hdr colors are a bit strange where the skin tones are very orange um so it may everyone looks like they've got a monster tan um but yeah i mean it doesn't actually come it doesn't come with many special features it doesn't list them on the back um it's got the extended version as well that's been remastered so if you if you quite enjoyed the extended version of independence day you can now see it in 4k uh sound is also very impressive it's the best it's probably ever looked because fox did go back and remaster it um but the HDR, as I say, is a bit off. So, yeah, you may be a little bit... Mm, you may end up having to adjust the TV yourself to sort of bring those oranges down. But, yeah, I mean, it's, I got this pe for, like, for peanuts. got for, like, £6 off eBay. So, yeah. Now, this is the 20th anniversary of Saving Private Ryan. It's an American version, hence the very slim case. Um, yeah, incredible. This is true 4K as well. When you've got... Because it's all shot on, like, high-speed lenses. So you've got that extra... Everything that's overly sharp, you know, when the... Uh, the debris flying past camera and stuff. Uh, once they kind of find Matt Damon or Private Ryan, and they go to the town at the end, and they're sort of discussing what to do. Is you know what to do with, with Ryan, either to leave him or just to move on. And Tom Hanks is having a chat with Tom Sizemore, and I just looked at the picture and I was like, Jesus, this looks so real. This looks so amazing. Because when the film is sort of slows itself down and the cameras are locked off and everything's in everything's in focus, everyone's just it's a normal dialogue scene. You really see the the photography and the and the high resolution come through. So yeah, this is worth getting if you you know a big fan of the film. I mean, everyone else told me it was I was like the beginning's really good and everything else is really boring. It's like fuck it, no way. Once it gets going, the ending is just like even better than the beginning. The ending is proper epic and it's so so emotional by that point. So yeah, it's worth getting hold of. Next is American Psycho. Uh, this is a true 4K version by Lionsgate. Um, Better than the old Blu-ray, which was absolutely pants. It was very the old Blu-ray was very washed out. It seemed to have been from like an old master, maybe maybe in just an upscale of a DVD. Who knows? But I sort of gave that away to charity. Um, yeah, I watched this the other night for the first time with my friend Amir. Got this for Christmas. Um, yes, yeah, the best it's ever looked. Uh, the HDR colouring is very good, very consistent. Doesn't go too far. It's very everything pops and looks great. Um, and the sound is impressive when the 80s music sort of kicks in. There's a few extra special features on here because it's an anniversary version. So you get a new commentary recorded uh, last year. Um, and disc two has a from book to screen documentary and the 80s downtown. And so a few there's, and there's a few deleted scenes on disc one as well. So yeah, it's worth getting hold of. Um, so it's Because it was out in America, I think first, and it came to the UK, so it's now in the UK. Um, and it's reasonably priced. So yeah, get hold of it if you can. Next, we have another US import, and it's the Fifth Element. This is a true 4K version. Very impressive picture and sound. I mean, the Fifth Element's always look good. It's always looked good on, looked good on Laserdisc when it came out. Looked good on Superbit DVD. Looked good on um, regular Blu-ray. And this version is the best I've ever seen it look. Um, huge guilty pleasure movie. Love, I love the humour. I love Chris Tucker in it. He's great. Mila Djokovic, uh, probably her best performance. Everything else she's done from then on has been pretty awful. But she's under the direction of her husband. You can't direct traffic. Um, so yeah, worth getting hold of. A bit pricey on import, so if you can find it cheap, definitely grab hold of it. Another US import, and it's Dread. Now this is um, this is unfortunately a 2K upscale, so it's not true 4K. Um, I was, everyone was you know upset that the Blu-ray was a bit rubbish because it had the, the 3D version as well. So there's a lot more compression to fit both the 2D and 3D one on there, so the picture was basically compromised. I mean, this film is heavily graded and heavily filtered with different other colours and stuff, so it's never going to look stunning, so to speak. I mean, it looks great for what it is, but I mean, it's never going to look how most people probably want it to look. 
Um, so yeah, it's a shame uh, Lionsgate didn't give us a true 4K version of this. It's actually just an upscale, so it's not, it didn't blow me away, sadly, but it's better than the regular Blu-ray version. So if you see it's going for a reasonable price, then I recommend getting hold of it. Next we have is Wonder Woman. Now, as I mentioned at the start of the video, some of the new films coming out aren't true 4K, and this is one of them, this is an upscale. Um, the picture was still pretty good. I mean, you also get that improved clarity with the upscale and you know, the HDR colors really boost some of the visuals, but it wasn't a huge leap. But um, yeah, I mean, it's still a great looking film. Um, it's I, I, This is probably the best DC movie for me, followed by probably um, Man of Steel. Um, so yeah, I mean, then it goes probably Justice League, then Aquaman, probably. Um, but yeah, so it's if you see it's going for a reasonable price, then get hold of it. But I mean, it's not, if you already own the Blu-ray, it's not really worth upgrading to the 4K version. Next is the Avengers Infinity War. Now this, like Wonder Woman, is not 4K. It's an upscale, which kind of disappointed me. A lot of the Marvel movies are. They're not true 4K. Um, they're all upscales. Obviously a great movie. Visually looks stunning, um, but it's not true 4K. The HDR colors are very, very good. The, the, they don't um, make the colors bleed at all. It's very consistent throughout. Um, so if you've got, you know, 4K player and you see it's going for a reasonable price, because sometimes sometimes the Blu-ray will be 10 pounds and the 4K version will be five pounds more or 10 pounds more, just get the Blu-ray because this, this isn't true 4K. Maybe in a few years, they'll put out a true 4K version. Then we'll all have to double dip again. But um, yeah, so great film, but not really worth upgrading to 4K. Ghost in the Shell. Now, not a very good film. <laughs> I watched this once in cinema and once when I got it on 4K. When this came out, actually, this was um, quite difficult to get hold of. A lot of the places like Zavi and HMV had sold out very quickly. Um, I had to get it on Amazon because um, I pre-ordered it through, pre -ordered it through Zavi. Um, yeah, and it wasn't, I mean, the picture quality is pretty good. I mean, it's like the daytime scenes look stunning. It's a great looking film, but the story's bollocks. So it's a pretty boring film. Um, but the dark scenes, you can barely see anything. I think you think with, you know, an improved resolution, you had to see the extra detail. Maybe if you've got an OLED TV, um, you probably get the extra detail out of those darker moments. But when we watched it on my TV, I was just like, I can't see anything. You know, where's, you know, what's going on? Um, so yeah, some moments where it looks stunning and other moments where it's just so dark, you can't see a bloody thing, even with even in 4K. And, and this is obviously an upscale. It's not true 4K. Shame. Next, we have The Revenant. Um, impressive looking movie, true 4K film. This came with a lot of, like Independence Day, came with a lot of Blu-ray players, 4K discs. Only has the 4K version included. Um, no extra features, apparently, on the back. Um, I've watched a bit of this. I was just like, wow, this, this is... This, Looks, looks stunning and so another sort of solid sort of demo disc and at the bottom it even says for promotional use only so this is the person i got this off that came with their blu-ray player and they went well i'm on board this film now and just put it on ebay that's why i got it for like six quid maybe maybe less actually so yeah so if you see it's going cheap grab hold of it because it's a stunning looking film and also an enjoyable film nonetheless um but i think some people may find it a bit dull my parents found it a bit dull there wasn't much talking in it because DiCaprio is on his own for, for, for long waves of the film. But yeah, worth, worth getting hold of. Next one is Thor Ragnarok. Um, another upscale, not true 4K. It does look very impressive though. The XGR colors are kept under control. Um, the sound sadly isn't as impressive as I was expecting in the cinema. Uh, hearing the score was really coming through the speakers very loud, uh, but on how it's mixed on this, uh, the, di the sound effects and dialogue take over more and the sound, the score takes more of a back back seat. So when you've got those moments where, you, where uh, Thor escapes to the window and Hulk's like, hey, come back, and he slides down and escapes, the, the score there is incredible, but it's so kind of quiet on the on the sound mix, but in the cinema, it was, it was really loud. So um, yeah, a bit disappointed by that, but yeah. Um, like, if, like Infinity War, if you already own the Blu-ray, it's not really worth upgrading to the 4K version, sadly, because it's not true 4K even though it says on the back, it's all a lie. Um, oh, controversial movie coming up now. The Last Jedi. Uh, now this is true 4K. This isn't, this isn't an upscale, it's you no know, proper 2160p. Um, saw it in the cinema, obviously you see my review, um, in the old Fix It and Post episodes. It's very mixed, I think, with this. Um, I wasn't 
I didn't hate it, didn't love it either. Makes a lot of mistakes throughout, I think, in, in terms of trying to be different and original, but I think they went a little bit too far and basically shot themselves in the foot. Um, but on second viewing, I absolutely loved all the Carlo Ren stuff. I think he's like the best character in it, best kind of interesting story arc. Ray doesn't really have much to do. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you're a big fan of this movie, the 4K version is definitely worth upgrading to. But if you hate the film, there's no point buying this in, is there? <laughs> Avoid <laughs> if you don't like it. Next is The Mummy, true 4K copy as well. So it's not an upscale, thank God. Looks stunning, really good sound. Jerry Goldsmith's score, incredible piece of music. Um, the Universal discs often had problems with edge enhancement. The Blu-ray ones did. This one doesn't appear to have that from what I recall. And the HDR colors are very much kept under control. Um, this was actually available as a box set first before they sold them individually. And someone had sold this at the box set as a separate version when it came out. I went, all I want is this because I don't want the sequels. So yeah, I was quite happy to get it on its own. Obviously it comes with the Blu-ray version as well. I'm not entirely sure if the Blu-ray is the remastered version or the old version. I'm probably guessing it's the old version. Um, I just took the disc. Yeah, it is. It's the old Universal disc on there. So yeah, so the 4K one's there. Yeah, worth getting hold of if you love The Mummy. Um, the next one is Alien Covenant. Um, upscale, I'm afraid. Not true 4K, which is a shame because I don't know why Fox would do that. Um, not a huge improvement over the Blu-ray, I'm afraid. Um, the sound is very impressive. Not many people like this film. I didn't mind it. Um, I thought it was okay. Um, obviously, there's, there are issues with it. You know, I'm not blind to its faults, um, but it's, you know, I, I often get won over by like, you know, because it's got the gore back again because the first Prometheus wasn't really that scary. And Jerry Goldsmith's music is, has returned as well. So that kind of often gets brownie points on me. So, yeah, not really worth the upgrade, I'm afraid. Next, we have probably the worst 4K disc I own in terms of picture transfer and quality. Um, and it is. Terminator 2. Um, yeah, this was this upset a lot of people when it came out um, because of the color grading shifting. I think looked different. The colors look look strange. Terminator 2 has had a weird sort of history on you know on video formats. I mean, when it came out on Laserdisc, James Cameron was a big supporter of the format, and that was sort of the demo disc for the format. Everyone loved it. Everyone praised Terminator 2 on that format. And as the years went on, it it was come under more scrutiny um, and I think people were very impressed with all the transfers everyone gets saying it, it should look better um, and it was sh shot on super 35 millimeter so you're essentially zooming in on the frame to fill out the 2351 it's not shot anamorphically so you're always going to get a lot of grain um, so they've gone back to it and cleaned up the picture and unfortunately changed all the colors which pissed people off and in 4k it doesn't look that spectacular despite it actually being a true native 4k disc so yeah, it's probably the weakest out of the bunch. Um, go check the reviews online. It gets like two out of five in many of the um, reviews. So yeah, it's unfortunate. And I watched it once and I was like, gutted, really? Um, yeah, so probably the weakest 4K title in my collection. Next is 2001 A Space Odyssey. Got this for Christmas. Uh, very impressive transfer, of course, 70 millimeter. The Blu-ray beforehand looks stunning and this looks stunning as well. Um, amazing sound as well. There was a slight bit of edge enhancement I noticed um, in some areas, but it wasn't off-putting. Um, yeah, true 4K, of course, and this is remastered by Christopher Nolan last year for its probably what, its 50th anniversary, I imagine. Must be. Um, yeah, definitely worth getting hold of. Quite pricey though. It's about 35 pounds on in the UK. That is in well in HMV and stores like that. So yeah, a bit pricey, but worth getting hold of if you're a big fan of 2001. Next up, we have one of my favorite films of all time, and it's Superman. I've of course reviewed this uh, separately, you know, true 4K film, very good picture, very good sound. Um, I think that's all you need to know really about this. <laughs> I've already reviewed it, but yeah, definitely, definitely go buy it. That would encourage Warner Brothers to release the others as well. Um, this is a movie I picked up at a Comic-Con, uh, very much like a Labyrinth. Um, I've a, I watched it once, took me a while to get around to watching it, and it is Jurassic Park. Um, this is the first one, comes to those annoying, look at that fucking cardboard crap. Why did they do this? It's fucking annoying. Well, I should really just bin it. But then if you ever got rid of it, some will go, oh, have you still got the sleeve? I'll be like, no, bin it, because it's bollocks. Um, yeah, um, picture-wise, I mean, I didn't, I didn't see a huge improvement. This is true 4K. Um, some of the obviously close-ups, everyone looks really nice. The HDR color grading is very, very good. It's not, doesn't appear to be, you know, oversaturated. 
Um, and weird thing is it kicked into DTS X. You can see down here, very small print. Um, and the sound mix sounded bizarre. It didn't sound right at all. I thought, what is wrong with this? Is this, is this, is this not a, you know, is it a different sound mix? It's, it's just how the DTS X version kind of decodes the sound. So you can thankfully switch back to the DTS master audio version, which is the one everyone's familiar with. So when you do play it, uh, make sure you don't play it in DTS X because it just sounds weird and um, doesn't sound right. So yeah, it's worth getting hold of, of course. And you know, it's just, just for the, the sound alone. And it's, you know, it's a classic film, isn't it? From the nineties, everyone, everyone adores this movie. So yeah, it's probably the best out of the bunch. So I think it's the only Jurassic Park film I own on 4K and probably will be the only one I own. Maybe Jurassic Park 3, if I'm a bit mental. <laughs> um, yeah, because that's out of the sequels, I quite like Jurassic Park 3 because it's a bit, it's a bit, you know, old school schlock with its story. But yeah, next up is Halloween, true 4K picture. Um, the colours have been slightly changed uh, from the previous versions. You may remember it on Laserdisc or DVD or uh, Blu-ray. Uh, the colours were slightly slightly warmer. These appear slightly co cooler um, and slightly um, dulled back, so to speak. The HDR like colour grading is fine. Uh, nothing's done over the top. Um, so if you, if you are you know a big fan of this movie and want want to uh, update to the 4K version, just check some other reviews. Don't just go with what I've just said, but, um, but sort of double check if you feel that you know the the 4K version is the one to get because it's all diff it's always difficult to know if you know sometimes when you look at the 4K version and you're so used to the older versions which one's actually a true representation of the, of the original 35 millimeter version um, technically this should be but you never know so just go double check but yeah it's worth getting hold of if you, if you see it uh, relatively cheap and if you don't already own it anyway so yeah because it comes with the Blu-ray version as well and a bunch of extras. So yeah, it's worth getting hold of just for, you know, if you don't actually own it. Next up is Guardians of the Galaxy. Now this unfortunately is an upscale. It's not true 4K, um, which is a shame. Great film, um, I quite enjoyed it. Not as good as the first one. Um, it does get better on repeated viewing. Um, Kurt Russell is incredible in it, so funny. Uh, the colors still pop, still look great. The HDR is kept under control. Um, so the colors don't bleed all the time. Um, yeah, very good film. Um, it's a shame that, um, what's his fucking name? <laughs> the director. Ah, I can't remember his name. What's his name? James Gunn. James Gunn. Shame he's not doing number three. Big shame, but hey ho. But yeah, if you see us going relatively cheap, get it. But if you already own the Blu-ray, it's not really worth upgrading to the 4K version, I'm afraid. The next title is Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri. Um, very good film, very funny film. Um, upscale, I'm afraid. Uh, not true 4K, but it did look stunning. It looked really good in, you know, with the HDR color grading as well. Um, I was very impressed by this. Because I was, I, you look at it and think, wow, that is 4K, but it's not. So yeah, if you see it's going for a good price, get hold of it. Very good film um, and definitely worth, you know, worthy of its awards it received. Um, yeah, and Francis McDormand is so good in this film. Yeah, I loved it, really good. Next up, we have Gladiator, true 4K film, plus the extended version on it as well. Loads of extras on there. Um, yeah, it's really blew me away. The battle at the beginning and seeing, you know, as, they, as they, you see that long shot as it cuts on Rome and you see him come through the city. Yeah, really impressive. Uh, and the sound's pretty immense. It's got a DTS X track as well. It didn't actually let me flick onto Master Audio for some reason. Maybe there's another way around it. But yeah, it sounded fine actually in DTS X. Um, yeah, I mean, this was. This is a truly stunning film. Still, it's still great today, and um, yeah, it's it goes for like because HMVs in the UK is going through financial problems. I think they've got a lot of sales going on, so this was part of the two for thirty. So I, I got this and glad you no know, Dark Crystal and this is part of the sale. So this has gone down in price. So get hold of it if you want to upgrade to four K. And last but not least, we have Hook, true four K film. Really impressive to look at. Amazing sound. John Williams' score is incredible. One of his best scores up there with Superman and Star Wars and Close Encounters and E.T. Um, yeah, the score always makes me cry. Robin Williams is pretty good throughout, uh, but he, he's, no, he's no match for Dustin Hoffman and Bob Hoskins. Bob Hoskins is so good in this film. Comes with um, 11 deleted scenes, never seen before. Um, so that's the only extra features plus a trailer. 
you know, Spielberg will never do a commentary <laughs> for these films. Never does commentaries for any of his films. But Spielberg is not a huge fan of this film. But I am, and I still love it to this day. I saw it in the cinema as a kid. The artist, like, one of those came out over Christmas, I believe. Yeah, I think it was. Back in the day when my mum used to take me and my younger sisters to the cinema and we saw this. And yeah, I was blown away by it. So yeah, worth getting hold of if you want to upgrade over your regular Blu-ray version. Well, everyone, that is the end of the collection video. I am completely burnt out now. <laughs> I am coming down with a cold. Well, I'm already suffering from a cold. Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. hope you found it informative. If you have any other questions, let me know in the comments section below. Okay, everyone, take care, and I'll see you all next time.